<clears throat> Hello, are there any questions? Before we get started, let me state that I've done a fair amount of grading. Let me log into Clark. <clears throat> so you should take a look at your last labs. And if you didn't get a five, uh, then you, uh, you will get a zero, a point zero 0.01. And uh, you will have the chance to redo the lab. You may resubmit your answers by 11.59 p.m. this Saturday. Uh, let me see what all I've graded here because I don't remember everything. I know uh, lab, the last lab has been graded. Um, I do have one question. Last second last grading week. of the lab. Just give me one minute. The okay. second grading of the labs I've not done, but I have regraded. No, I have not regraded a second time any of the labs, but I, I graded all of the labs that we've done one time. Okay, what's your question? Um, so the one last week, I think it was lab zero zero. Um, I submitted it a little bit later than like 8 a.m. because I don't know if that's when we turned it in the week before, but it wasn't the timeline of like 11.59 p.m. So I didn't know. <laughs> I guess I didn't know how to submit that or if I was late uh, submitting that. Uh, if you could submit it, that means uh, you submitted it during the second time period. I have not regraded those. Okay, I okay. Maybe I'll message you specifically because I'm I'm not for sure if I submitted it or not. Um, what lab is it? Uh, just a minute. Let me see who's talking. I've got so many windows open now. Oh, here we go. All right. Uh, is this Alana? Alana, yeah. Alana. Oh, good. That finished. This will speed up my computer. I don't know if you guys can see this, but the lecture file just finished. Um, I don't have share screen on yet. So give me uh, a minute. All right, Alana. <clears throat> Alana, what's your last name? Guild. G. Guild, yes. Guild with a G. Guild with a G, okay. Um, all right, the worksheets are submitted. I have a worksheet lab zero, which I zero zero, which I regraded. I have a worksheet lab one of yours, which it looks like I graded it and then you submitted it again. I've got worksheet for lab two. Okay, but you don't have a second graded, submission. Huh? You don't have a second submission for uh, zero zero. No. Okay. All right. Um, let's come down here. And uh, so uh, obviously I did worksheet uh, zero, zero has been graded and worksheet lab uh, zero, one, as well as worksheet lab two <clears throat> have all been graded. So far, they've only been graded one time. And I've graded worksheet to lecture one and worksheet to lecture two. I think I graded one of the quizzes too. Let me take a look at that. Oh, I'm not finding it. Where is that? Yeah, the Plagy quiz has been graded and practice quiz 00B and practice quiz 00A have all been graded. <clears throat> A question. 00B 
we got point 0.1 point for each correct answer, huh? Is there a way to find out answers to those uh, practice uh, quizzes um, or no? Uh, I didn't understand your question. Could you repeat it? Oh, can you hear me now? Uh, I can hear you. I didn't understand it. The question is, is it possible to find out answers uh, to our practice questions? Um, it, it's related to the material we're learning, so it would be good to see what I missed. Uh, no. Okay, the answers no. are showing in practice quiz no 00B. Part. Let me make sure of that. Uh, on practice quiz 00A, I've got to look. I don't know. But on quiz 00B, the, uh, oh, let's edit that. <clears throat> we should be able to get the answers. Let's see, the answers, oh, come on, stop moving. The answer should be showing, and I'll expand it. They started showing on October 1st, and they're gonna be showing for, I'm gonna make it two weeks to uh, October 15th. The answer should be showing from October 1st to October 15th. I think on practice quiz 00B, to see the quiz, you have to go in with Respondus Lockdown Browser. I'll go student view. I don't have Respondus Lockdown Browser on my computer, but I'm going to... Um, okay. I don't think I can see the answers because I don't have Respondus Lockdown Browser on this computer. But I think with quiz 00B, go in Respondus Lockdown Browser. Here we go. Yeah, it's just telling me that I don't have a submission for that. And uh, all right, let's go into practice quiz 00A and let's get out of student view. Oh. That didn't work. Go back to that. Oh, I'm still in student view. Why is that? There we go. Let me see if there's answers to quiz 00A. Just, I don't even remember. Question one. Yeah, in the quiz 00A, there are general answers. Okay, so you should be able to get the answers. In quiz 00A, you do not need to use Respondus Lockdown Browser to go in and get it. Hopefully you'll have no trouble getting your answers with Respondus Lockdown Browser because I don't have it on the computer, my computer, so I'm not the person to tell you how to get the answers. But I do have answers. Uh, the Plagy quiz has been graded. I have not graded the extra credit picture or extra credit study sheet. I think I got started on the extra studies study sheet. All right, those are all the assignments that have been graded. Any question about any of that? If not, let me get out of the grade book and then I'll share my screen. You can able to see my screen now. What we're doing today is we're gonna be discussing lab 03, microscope basics.
<clears throat> you should have read part of chapter three on that. I think I'm going to close that down. And let's talk about lab three. So there are some video clips today, and there is a, a virtual online microscope exercise with today, you're not physically going to be using the microscope, but upon completion of the lab module, you should be able to locate and name the parts of the compound microscope, along with describing their functions. You should be able to calculate the total magnification for each objective lens that's used. You should know the guidelines for focusing specimens with different objectives meaning you should start with the scanning micro, uh, the scanning lens, move up to the low power lens, the high power lens, and then the oil immersion lens. Now I will tell you, I do not call them these terms because the low power lens is not the lowest and the high power lens is not the highest. I typically call it the 4X lens, which is the scanning, lens, objective lens. The low power lens is the 10x power lens. And the high power lens is the 40x objective lens. The oil immersion lens, and I will use that term, is the 100x objective lens. Estimate, be able to estimate the size of a specimen when seen at the different magnification powers. Understand the rules for proper microscope care. You're not going to use a microscope, but we do expect you to know the rules for proper care of the microscope. And then be able to define the terms associated with the microscope. You do need to memorize the names and the functions of these parts of the microscope. Number one, these are the ocular lens or the eyepiece. Two is the, the objective lens. And this looks like the 4X objective lens here and here. Three, the stage. It's where you put the slide. Stage clip holds the slide on the stage and then can move it around. I don't see number five. Why am I? Oh, there it is there. Uh, five is the uh, stage clip mover device. What do you call that? Stage clip control. Okay, so that will move the slide around this way as well as up and down. Um, not up and down, but back and forth and side to side. Uh, six is the iris diaphragm. Seven, the uh, condenser. And sometimes in a microscope, these can be reversed, meaning that six can be below seven, seven above. Well, on this paragraph, it's this way. Uh, eight, the court coarse focus adjusting knob, the big one. Uh, nine, the fine focus adjusting knob. 10, the light switch turning off and on. And then 11, I call it the rheostat. This is adjusting the uh, amount of light coming through the lamp, which is the 12, the light source of the lamp. Any question on any of that? All right, here's the different uh, keys. You do need to know this table. You should know the name of the lens, and generally I'll use the power of the lens when I'm discussing it, the 4X objective lens as a power magnifies four times, 10X magnifies 10 times. The total magnification of each lens with our microscopes, uh, the total magnification, which is true for all microscopes, but it's gonna be the power of the uh, objective lens times the power of the ocular lens. And you can see for our microscopes that we have an ocular lens which magnifies 10 times. 
Any questions about that? Hopefully you didn't see any of that. Um, so the total magnification for our microscope will be 10 times the power of the objective lens. Or the total magnification is the power of the objective lens times the power of the ocular lens. You should know the depth of field for the scanning lens. We have the highest depth of field. Meaning we can see the greatest depth. So for this object, we'll turn it this way. You can see, hopefully you can see this. I don't know that. Uh, you can see that it has a depth. And under the 4X lens, you might be able to see the entire object, the entire specimen from the top to the bottom. It has the deepest depth of field. For the low power lens, the 10X lens, we have a smaller depth of field. For the 40X lens, it's even a smaller depth of field. And for the oil immersion lens, it is a very narrow depth of field. Essentially with the 100X lens, you're only seeing one plane, if you can see this, one plane for the depth of field. For the field of view, the 4X lens, you have the largest field of view. For the 10X lens, it's smaller. For the 40X lens, it's even smaller. And then for the field of view for the 100X lens, it's very small. It's essentially a pinprick, the field of view. The comments, the 4X lens is the easiest to use because it has the greatest depth and the largest field of view. And then the 100X objective lens is the hardest to use because it has the narrowest depth of field and the smallest field of view. Any questions about any of that? You should know this table. It's also uh, noteworthy that when you look at an image under the microscope, it is more than just magnified. It is also inverted and reversed. So if we're looking at the letter E under the microscope, it is magnified, but it is inverted and reversed. So it would look like this. Any question about any of that? So when you're using the light microscope, you should know that the lab manual tells you that the iris diaphragm is the most important uh, part of the microscope for controlling the light. You can open it up, allow more light through, or you can close it down and uh, less light comes through. The iris diaphragm is not the best for controlling the amount of light, however. The best for controlling how much light you have would be using the rheostat. The iris diaphragm is more important in that it increases or decreases the contrast of the specimen against its background, meaning against the slide. And when you have the iris diaphragm at its optimal position, you have the highest contrast of the specimen against the background of the slide. Any question about any of that? The condenser, on the other hand, just uh, focuses the light onto the specimen. It's the iris diaphragm that closes down how much light is coming through the condenser. The iris diaphragm is like a shutter on a camera. You can open it so it's very large, or you can shut it down so it's very small.
when you're first using the microscope, you should uh, start with the 4X objective lens because it's the easiest to use, as well as the fact that it'll be the quickest for you to use and it's the first one. It has the largest field of view, so you're more likely to see the specimen in it. And these are tips for focusing. Let me calm down. You should use the course focus adjustment knob to slowly raise the stage and bring the, the, uh, the object into focus. You should then use the fine focus to get the object crystal clear. And then once you're done with that, you do not use the course focus any further. You don't use the course focus except when you're using the 4X lens. If ever you use the course focus, you may as well start all over again and uh, start with the 4X lens, use the course focus, meaning once you go to a higher power lens, you no longer use the course focus adjustment knob. You only use the fine focus. Why? Is because our lenses are parafocal. And that means that when you have the objective in focus with one objective lens, they should be in focus or close to it with all of the objective lenses. And so you only need to use the fine focus. If ever you use the course focus, you've just re, uh, removed the focusing. And that's why you should just start all over again. So when you go up to the 10X lens, the 40X lens, or the 100X lens, you should only be using the fine focus. Before you move from one objective lens to the next higher objective lens, meaning before you move from the 4X lens to the uh, 10X lens, you should move the specimen to the center of your field of view. Let's see if I can draw this out. Here's your field of view. Hopefully you can see that. If you're looking at something that's way over here, and then you go to the 10X lens, you're not gonna have this large of a field of view. You'll have a smaller field of view. And so the specimen you are looking at here is no longer in your field of view. So you should move your specimen to the center of your field of view before you go to the next higher objective lens and then your specimen will be in the field of view. Any questions about that? And whenever you go to a higher field of view, you always move the specimen to the center of your field of view. All right, before you use oil on the glass, we use oil because it has the same refractive index as glass and then allows more light to be gathered by the oil immersion lens. By getting more light into the lens, you greatly increase the resolution or clarity of the image. And so you make the viewing of it better. And so with the oil immersion lens, for it to really work, you have to add oil. If you don't add oil to the 100X oil immersion lens, the lens is no better than the 40X objective lens. And the 40X objective lens is easier to use, so you should use it instead. If ever you use oil, then you have to clean the lens to remove it, the oil. And we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. How you uh, use oil on the lens is you 
get your specimen in your fine focus with the 40x lens, and then you rotate the 40x lens halfway out of the specimen. Meaning, can you see this? Hello? Yes. Okay. So you move the 40x lens halfway out. And the 100x lens, which would be over here, is not moved on top of the specimen. It's half out. And then that allows you, pretend this is oil, and I'm going to put a drop of oil on it. It allows you to get in with the oil. Put a single drop, small drop of oil, over the specimen. And then you move the 100x lens through the drop of oil over the specimen. And so between the glass and the 100x oil immersion lens, there will be oil there. There's no air, just oil. And that will decrease the refraction of the light, increasing more light getting into the oil immersion lens. Any question about any of that? And then if ever you use oil, remember before you're done, you need to clean the oil off of the lens with a lens paper. Lens paper is special paper that has the wood fibers removed from it and the wood fibers will scratch the lens. And so you don't want that happening. So you only use lens paper on the, on the lenses. All right, let's talk about the activities. In activity one, you're not going to perform any of these activities in this lab, but we do have the uh, results and pictures for you to work on as if you were working with the microscope. And you can work with a virtual microscope. We have a virtual exercise for you to do working with a microscope on your computer, meaning a virtual microscope. You are expected to know the information contained in the table and how to use the formula below um, is to determine the uh, magnification. All right, so go through activity one where you can read through it. In the lab, you actually came in the lab, you would actually do it. And then you measure the field of view for each of the objective lenses and then record it. And you can't really do that. Actually, you know, I could think about how we could do that, where we could just have you uh, take a virtual ruler on a virtual picture. But we're not going to do that. We've already done it for you for the uh, objective lenses, there's the name and there's the magnification. I'll just call it the 4X objective lens. The diameter is 4.5 millimeters, or that is 4,500 micrometers. Our field of view, you can then get an estimate of the size of your specimen. For example, if the specimen were to take up half of the field of view or the 40x, 4x, sorry, 4x um, main, uh, objective lens, then we know the field of view is 4.5 millimeters. So the specimen that you're observing would be something like 2.25 millimeters because we know it takes up about half of the field of view. Any questions about that? And that is how you estimate the size of your specimen. And you will have to estimate the size of your specimens in this lab. So you are expected to understand the material in the exercise. In activity two, you're going to be observing prepared slides. You will be doing this on a virtual exercise. 
in completing the exercise. I've already talked about how you add oil. So go through the oil. So you should check the 40X lens for oil if you're using oil and then clean it off the 40X lens. All right, read through uh, this activity two. On activity three, you do not have to do activity three. We're not gonna test you on this procedure, but we're giving you activity three, how to make a wet mount. And you may have made a wet mount in your biology 160 class. All right, you do need to know how to store the microscope appropriately. You're not gonna handle real microscopes, but you are expected to know how to correctly store a microscope. So when you're all done with the microscope, lower the stage completely, remove the slide and put it away. If you use immer immersion oil, then you should clean the lenses, both the 100X and the 40X lens with lens paper. Do not use chem wipes, paper towels, or other paper because paper has wood fibers in it and that will scratch the lenses, which will damage the lenses. And the lenses are the most uh, expensive part of the microscope. Um, when you're done with that, then put the 4X objective lens in place meaning the 4X objective lens is rotated into position over where the specimen would be. You should lower the light intensity to the minimum and then turn the rheostat so it's on low. Switch the light off, unplug the microscope, wrap the cord neatly, And then with both hands, carry the microscope to the microscope container. We have cupboards for storing the microscopes. And the microscopes should be put in the same way that they were, meaning there's a certain way to put them in. Let me put it this way. This side should go in first, so that side would be facing out of the cubby hole. Any questions about that? I talked about that, where was I? All right, so you should know the different terms of the microscope. Boy, that's not good spacing. That should be refractive index. There's another spacing mistake. Uh, resolving power, view of the view, or FOV, view of the view, working distance, the power. And usually we'll talk about the total power, the magnification of the lens times the ocular lens. And then do the laboratory exercises. Let's go ahead and go to the worksheet to talk about that. So uh, we have some video clips for you to view on the general focusing of a microscope and then adding oil to the microscope. And then practice your microscope skills by using the virtual microscope, meaning we have a microscope that you'll be running on your computer, a virtual microscope. I think I've got that here. When you click on this link, it'll take a little while to download, depending on how fast your internet connection is. So give it time. And then when you come here, start reading it. I don't see the menu here, but let's select the uh, microscope. Okay, here we go. So I'll tell you the description here. You want to go with the, I think the learn. Uh, 
And uh, I think this part is just telling you what the papers, the different parts of the microscope are. So go through that. Let's go back to the menu and go to the using the microscope. Explore maybe. All right, so here we have the microscope, and now we're going to use it. We need to get a slide. And so the question mark tells you what to do. Let's go ahead and get a flat slide. We'll do the onion root. And now I put the slide on under the microscope. And let's start with the 4X lens. And now we need to focus. Because there's the onion root right there. And so let's use the coarse focus. Get it in about as good a focus as we can. Probably that's too far, right around there. Now that's pretty well centered. Let's go ahead and use the fine focus a little. That's pretty good. Let's add a little more light. Or that's better right there. All right, let's go to the 10x lens. I don't need to uh, adjust this. Normally, you'd adjust this in the center, but that's done automatically for you. Let's go to the next slide. And you can see that it's pretty well focused. So let me just do some fine focusing. I was looking for some uh, chromosomes. I'm not seeing any. I have to go to the higher power. I'm not seeing any. All right, let's go to the 40 X lens. Ah, oh, here we go. Now let's find focus. Someplace around there. There's some chromosomes. They're very uh, split up and together, so it's not easy to see. There's some chromosomes there, but there's a slide under a uh, cell underneath it. I'm not able to get. Well, I guess we'll leave there and find focus on the chromosomes. Light adjustment. Let's go ahead and go to the hundred X lens. With the hundred X lens, you have to add oil, and so this is halfway out, halfway out, grab our oil. This is what this is here. The question mark tells you what to grab. And normally you put it over there, but apparently it's got the oil already there. And you can see we need to find focus. So let's see how it's best. Oh, there's some chromosome, but not the one I was looking at. Oh, well, we'll go there. Any question about how you use this? Anyways, play with it. Uh, the virtual exercises are very good because you can do some actual laboratory work on your computer. And then we have practice naming the microscopes. What you do here is put that in a window. Press play. Oh, here it is here. And so the power switch. You have to find the power switch. And the power switch is right here. And if you get that sign, it means it's good and it goes on. I'll have to do one incorrectly. 
for the course adjustment knob, that would be this big one. Let me turn this down, it's a little loud for me. I don't think this adjusts your volume. Come on. Click on the blue thing. And now I'm gonna get this one purposely wrong. There's the iris tire from there. I'm gonna go there. And you see how it gave a different sound? So if you go there, it's the correct one. All right, so that's how you do this. Any questions about this? Which one are we on, worksheet? And then fill in the blanks with the correct answers. So 4A, when focusing a specimen, you should always start with which objective lens? When using the low power, high power, and oil objectives, only what focus adjustment knob should be used? This is either fine focus adjustment knob or coarse focus. And then answer the questions. On two, we have a typical bacterial cell, which is two micrometers in diameter in the circle below, which represents the field of view under your microscope using the oil immersion objective. State how many cells you can fit across the circle under the oil immersion lens. And how you do that is you come to the lab manual Come to this table, and it tells you the uh, field of view for the oil immersion lens. Any questions? All right, if there's no questions, I will be here until eight o'clock to help you with the lab. Go ahead and get started on the lab. Um, I may walk away from my desk to get something to eat, but I will return within about two minutes. So if I'm not here, just hold your question until I get back, I will return. Uh, at the moment, I'm gonna be staying here, but uh, uh, later I may go grab something to eat. All right, any questions? I have a question about one of the questions. Okay. Um, on 4K, it asks how large the field of view is. Uh, um, what question? I didn't hear the number. Sorry, yeah, it's 4K. 4K. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, want diameter or area? I say again. Do you want diameter or area? Uh, diameter. Perfect, thank you. Okay. And I had a question. Yeah, we don't give you two. area in the lab module but we do give you the diameter. I had a question about number two. And that's supposed to be a measurement, by the way, on 4K. So don't tell me something like small or large. You have to give me a measurement. Okay, what was your second question? On number two, I'm still kind of lost on that one. I'm using the table that's within the module um, for the diameter. You're using the table that's in the lab module? Yeah. Uh-huh. And so I'm a little confused on how to get, because I have an answer, but I'm not sure it's correct. And I certainly don't think I could draw it. <laughs> well, I'm not asking you to draw it, but uh, you just give the answer. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, because I got- I'm trying to decide. I will, I don't want to tell you it's correct or not, because everybody's hearing this, but uh, um, what did you do first? Well, I went to, what was it, it was page, page five, and I looked at the oil immersion, immersion uh -huh. and I looked at the diameter in micrometers, and it was 180, and since- okay, that's a good um, start. Since a bacterial cell is two micrometers in diameter, uh -huh. um, I divided it together by that. Sounds good. Okay. 
Do we have to draw it out though? No, I didn't say draw. I just said state how many cells you can fit across the circle of oh, okay. the oil immersion lens. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. 